Hello, everybody. I'm Michelle Miller, and I'm here with Dr. Patty de Blasio. Uh, as a clinical nutritionist, I'm always thinking about, you know, the underlying root cause, but that is absolutely how Dr. Patty thinks too. And so today we wanted to do a little bit of a conversation around the facts and myths with peptides, because peptides are such a hot topic. Um, but I think what we'll talk about today is the it always really comes back to, are we getting to the root of the problem? So let's start with the good stuff. What do you love about peptides? What are some of your favorite peptides to use? Like what are all, all the, the good facts that we could give some people about what are peptides? Well, I love that peptides simply are just short chains of amino acids. So they're very natural. There's something our body makes on its own, but we just help enhance that by um, giving ourselves additional peptides. Um, and so many of the peptides that we use literally are just um, a short chain of three amino acids. And some of my favorites are GHK copper. Um, I especially like BPC-157 um, and CJC epimorelin. Those are the three main ones that um, I really like. What's also great about peptides is they come in different applications. So we have injectables for certain situations. Sometimes we might have a nasal spray. Sometimes we might, you know, from time to time, we might consider a topical or an oral. Um, but I think that also helps us customize it a little bit. It does. It does. And I think that works well because some people don't want needles. They don't want to have to inject something um, into themselves. Um, and other people are fine with it. So it's great that we have a, sort of a whole array of options for patients. Now, a question I get a lot is uh, around peptides specifically, are, are kind of patients coming in asking, you know, how, if I want to use a peptide, how long do I use it for? That's a great question because we want peptides to sort of mimic the rhythm in our body. And so we cycle them. And often what we do is a cycle is about anywhere from 20 to 30 days, uh, about a month. And we cycle them for that first month. If the patient really loves it and we see some good benefit, often we'll do a second cycle right after that first. And then we take a little bit of time off um, so that the, the body can begin to oh, I need to make some peptide here, I'm gonna do this. And so in between the, the cycles that we're doing, we're encouraging the body to continue to produce its own and produce even more. So that is often really helpful because you know peptides can be a little bit on the pricey side. And so this isn't something you're gonna start and be on forever. You know, we cycle it, we assess how you feel, we assess how your labs are responding. Um, and that kind of helps figure out what the right cadence is for you. Um, but labs, let's talk about that a little bit more because we definitely believe in testing appropriately to get a sense of, you know, what are the markers of improvement? What are the things we're looking to support? And I do think that is a big piece of maybe the myths element of, you know, where peptides are. I think a lot of people think peptides are kind of this like fix all, cure all thing where really they're just a tool in our toolbox, just like a lot of other things like diet and lifestyle and, you know, nutraceuticals or herbs might be. Um, but do, would you mind talking a little bit about kind of our approach to, to how and when we decide we're going to use peptides? Sure. So while peptides are good, like Michelle said, it's like they're not the end all and be all. And we want to make sure that we're not just treating something up here. Let's say maybe you've got a sore ankle and we're just constantly treating the sore ankle instead of really getting to the root, maybe it's inflammation, chronic inflammation. And so we want to utilize um, and make it as cost effective for you when we do use peptides. So normally the way that we like to work is we do a good evaluation for you and we have our team approach so that we get to the root of the problem. And then if we feel like peptides can be beneficial, then we use them. Yeah, time and time again, we'll have, um, you know, prospective patient inquiries saying, you know, I, I, I want to use uh, CMAX or I want to use Selenc or I want to use, you know, uh, CJC, uh, you know, these different peptides that they've read a lot about, they've heard amazing things and they're eager to see, okay, what benefits can I get from this? But our, our take is that in a true holistic integrated uh, 
approach to, to wellness, we have to come back to what is the root of your issue, right? What are, what are your conditions? What are your symptoms that we're trying to get to the root of to resolve? Because even let's take something like anxiety. I think we hear this a lot um, with, with Selenq. Um, this, this peptide that could be potentially helpful for someone that has anxiety. It doesn't mean it's going to help every person because every person's anxiety is rooted from a different cause. And that's why we want to do comprehensive blood work that looks at vitamins and minerals and inflammatory markers and hormone levels. We want to do cortisol panels to assess adrenal function, cortisol levels throughout the day. We want to do comprehensive gut testing to look at the gut microbiome, look at any opportunistic bacteria that you have, uh, the, the commensal bacteria, all the good guys that should be there. So there's so many factors that come into play. It would almost be doing a disservice just to say, here's a peptide, give it a try. Because like we said, it's, you know, these things aren't necessarily cheap. And we just have so many tools in our toolbox. Peptides are one of them, but you deserve to get customized, personalized care and sometimes it may include a peptide and sometimes it might not. Exactly. And, you know, it'd be sort of like what we think in holistic and integrative medicine is, you know, we don't just want to just give you, treat a symptom, right? And we always say that about Western medicine. Often we come up short, we just want to throw a prescription sure. out there for you. And so we want to get to the root of, of what the issue is and not just throw something at your, let's say, you have high blood sugar and so we throw you a prescription drug but maybe you could actually change a little bit of your diet and completely get rid of your type 2 diabetes for example so we do the same thing you've got a chronic nagging issue that you're always aggravating at the gym and you know just to continue to treat that issue way up here um, and it just keeps coming back it's frustrating and very expensive and so we want to help you and always, I love that tool belt, you know, tools in our tool belt so that we can really help you to get to the root of your problem and if possible, fix it um, or at least begin to manage it and make it much easier for you to live your life and feel healthy. Yeah, I, I love that point. It's, um, you know, so often that is the complaint in conventional medicine is that I'm just getting thrown these medications. You know, no one's really looking into my health. No one's really hearing me or listening to me. Yeah. It's just kind of one thing after another. And, you know, just because peptides are natural doesn't mean that that is any better care. If you're just getting thrown a peptide, you really need to be understood. Like, let's look under the cut. Let's look under the hood, right? What's, what's going on under the surface. Exactly. And I love the peptides in that I've used them myself, pretty much all of them and in different ways. And I, I do find that they've been very helpful, but often in order to get peptides activated in your body, you if you do not have the right minerals, mm. um, then, then they're not going to work as well. And so like, for example, GHK copper is one. If your copper is low, then you don't have that copper. We call it the escort model. Uh, it just brings yep. the GHK into the body and it just escorts that, mo that molecule, escorts it in. If you don't have enough copper, then um, you're, it's not going to be nearly as effective for you. And so we don't want to miss that. In the meantime, you're doing the peptide and you're wondering why it's not working for you. You know, it's so funny. I, I had somebody say the same thing about BPC that they had worked with another clinic and they used BPC almost as like a healing anti-inflammatory agent, but because nothing had been addressed in the diet and there was still inflammation coming from all these other places, it didn't have that big of an impact versus when we approached it, it was the last thing we did. We did all these other things first to address diet and lifestyle, you know, replete nutrient levels, and then using BPC, there was a difference. So it's also like, if you're going to give this type of medicine a try, you might as well give it the best shot it deserves and really get the best impact you can get from it. I know it's so true. And for example, let's say that you really had some inflammation in your thyroid, but you didn't know it. And so when we're giving a peptide, then what's going to happen is, is if you've got a lot of inflammation going on, then and maybe let's say what you really wanted was for the wrist to be better or your, your yeah. wrist was sore, you had injured it in a, in, in, a, in a gym workout or something. And so what's going to happen is, is that that peptide is going to be a little bit more frantic trying to look at something like thyroid, yeah. which is, you know, quality and quantity of life. You got to have that. Whereas the sore wrist, well, you can live with the sore wrist. So we want you to get the maximum benefit for the true things you want it for. And yet right. we want to treat 
any overall issues that you have to give you better health. Well, we hope this has been helpful and informative. If you have questions about peptides and if they're right for you, if you have questions about how to get to the root of your health issues, we'd love to hear from you. Please reach out to us and hopefully we'll see you soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Michelle.